Yes, good morning, good morning, good morning. Boy, I'll tell you, we need to pray for a, a whole slug of people. Um, more and more people, not only are you getting the colds or the flus or shingles or whatever it is, I mean, the list, the prayer list is long. It is long with people uh, needing a healing touch from God. And, um, you know, every time I turn around, there's another email, something happened to somebody, somebody got sick, somebody fell down, somebody did this or that. So we just got to keep each other in prayer, don't we? We got, to, we got to really focus in prayer for one another, and uh, today we're going to kind of we're going to conclude the, the the series on the battle for our minds, and this is called our plan of action, and I'm working on another series uh, hopefully next week, and that's going to be how to hear the voice of God, and so it's going to it's it's going to be something I hope will be helpful to you. Uh, oftentimes God speaks to us, but we're not even aware of it. We, you know, we just think it's a thought we're having or it, it's something that crosses our mind. But oftentimes God will give you a word. Just It'll be a word and, you know, you'll kind of ponder it, think about it. Uh, and so I'm going to, I don't know how long, it's, it's going to be a couple weeks anyway, but it's going to be how to hear the voice of God. But I want to conclude with this today, and I'm, I'm really glad I'm getting done with the battle for our minds because what I dislike about being a teacher is that I have to experience everything I'm going to teach. So I don't really enjoy this part of it at all. I mean, I've, you probably don't have this, but I've had the weirdest, dumbest thoughts just instantaneously come in my mind. And I think, where in the world, what's going on? I rebuke it in Jesus' name. I just will not tolerate it in Jesus' name. But it has been a battle. I mean, it's been a legitimate battle for little piddly things. And then some are big, but some are real small. But it's just enough to do what? Rob your peace. And so we're going we're gonna to get a plan of action, and that's what we're going to focus on this morning. But before we do, let's pray. Just kind of prepare our hearts for what the Holy Spirit has for you and I today. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for our time of worship, our time of praise, our time of thanksgiving. Father, uh, for my brother that prayed for the churches in Kenmore, we need to lift each other up. We just need to pray for one another and build each other up. And so, Holy Spirit, I ask you to come be our teacher, be our guide, illuminate this word. I ask you to illuminate this word, bring the scriptures off this page, and may it penetrate our very spirit and soul. May all these things be done that Jesus Christ is glorified, our Heavenly Father is lifted up. And Holy Spirit, I thank you for being our comforter, our counselor, and our guide. And we ask and I pray all these blessings on us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, um, but... Whether we understand or not, we spend a lot of time planning, don't we? I mean, you plan dinner, you plan a vacation, you plan something you're going to do today, you plan meetings, you plan appointments. And oftentimes, I don't even think we think about it. We automatically sort of do it, don't we? And so what I want to discuss today is our, our plan of action against the battle that's raging for our minds. So we want to set up a plan, right? And we have to understand what's going on. So as we begin this morning, I'm going to just jump right into our notes. If you have your notes with you, I'm going to get right into that. So Roman numeral number one, the importance of renewing our minds. The importance of renewing our minds. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Now this is very important too. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world. Don't conform any longer to the patterns of this world. And we've been talking about that the last three weeks. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. And that will isn't that what we want? We want God's perfect will for our life. We want to think about it. We want that perfect will. We want what's pleasing and good. And we want God to be happy with us. Amen? Amen. We want him to be happy with us. So number one, a transformation means a change of substance, character, and conduct. It's a radical change. It's, if you will, a metamorphosis takes place. And what I did even in my own notes, I underlined conduct. How we conduct our life. How we do those things. And it takes a renewing of the mind, oftentimes. 
to reshape us, have us to rethink things through, reevaluate things in our lives. And number two, this is a transformation of our habits, things that are contrary to the Word of God. You can have good habits and you can have bad habits. Good habits are, I don't know, I make a list every day of what I have to accomplish, so I write down all the things I need to do that day, and it's a habit I have. I have, if you talk to my wife, I do have some good habits and I have some weird habits. I have some things that are, that are kind of different, but uh, anyway, we have these habits and we, we want to make sure that our habits are in alignment with the Word of God. Everything has to be in alignment with the Word of God. Number three, the key is a renewed mind. To renew our mind. And I'm going to tell you, I think it has to happen daily. I don't, think it's, I don't think it's just you renew it and it's a done deal. Because every day is a new challenge. Every day new thoughts come into our mind. Every day something new happens. So I believe there is a renewing that has to take place every single solitary day. That's why, and I'll probably talk, I will talk about this a little bit later, why we have to put on our spiritual armor every day. Every single day. Every day is a new day. And so we have to understand that, and besides that, because the renewed mind, it has a change from the inside out. That's number three. The key is a renewed mind and a change from the inside out. From the inside out. And number four, this is important. There is a difference in our thinking, how we think, how we view life, how we view people, how we view what's going on in the world, and all the craziness that's, well, Gary, we pray for the politicians every Sunday. Um, you know, they're just kind of all nuts, you know. Yeah. I don't care what you think, you know, but it's just like, you wonder what their thinking is all about. And you would want them to have a renewed mind, wouldn't you? You'd want them to have the mind of Christ. And so that's it, the same thing with us. Um, when we renew our mind, we start to think differently. And if we're thinking godly thoughts and godly ways, then something else comes in, we immediately know this is not lining up with the Word of God. And instantaneously, we need to rebuke it and correct it, and it's unacceptable. I will not accept that. I will not accept that thought. I will not accept that viewpoint. I'm gonna have my, I'm, I want the mind of Christ all the time. I want my thoughts, my actions, and my prayers to be just like Jesus Christ. And we're going to talk about that as well. So the purpose is so that we don't conform to this world. I talked about this last week. It's the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the boastful pride of life. Those are kind of things we have to renew our minds about. These are things that, these are actions. The world, the world wants to squeeze you and I into its pattern. Okay? Slowly but surely. And I, I notice this, and I... Um, I notice that on TV, I don't have iPhones and all that kind of stuff. I, I have a flip-top phone, so that's as far as I go. But um, I watch how the world and um, how to be, um, I can't even think of the words, um, what, what diverse, if you will. Diversity is always kind of thrown at you and, 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 and trying to reshape your thinking. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but what I am saying is, that we need to make sure our mind lines up with the Word of God and that we have the mind of Christ, okay? And we have all these subtle influences. I don't know, you might like to listen to the radio, you might like to watch TV, but all these subtleties come in to try to influence how you think, don't they? Watch a commercial. Watch any kind of commercial. If you don't even like candy, by the time you're done, you will love candy. I mean, if it can get to your brain, it can change you, right? And so we have to make sure that we have a different way of thinking, and it has to be a godly way of thinking. Now, number two, pulling down the strongholds in our lives. Pulling down the strongholds in our lives. 2 Corinthians 10.3. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons uh, we fight with are not weapons of the world. Again, very important. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. You and I have the Holy Spirit. We have the power of Almighty God to break down any stronghold that tries to, to um, build itself in your, in your life. A stronghold, a fortress, if you will. Because it'll try to get in and it'll try to change your thinking. It'll try to transform how you think. But you have the power through the Holy Spirit to demolish it. Just tear it to shreds. Get rid of it. It does not have to have an embedded place in your life. And it all comes in our mind, doesn't it? It's all first in our thoughts, how we think. 
So we got to keep that in mind. Then it goes on. We demolish arguments and every pretense that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Now here's something very, very, very important. I have it underlined in your notes, I think. We take every thought captive to make it obedient to Christ. Every thought captive. That means sometimes you get mad at people, you get agitated, aggravated, all kinds of different things. But we have to take those thoughts captive. We cannot allow them to control us. We should take those thoughts and put it in prison. Get it away from us. Now, it has to do with people sometimes, things, events, all these different things that take place in our life. So we have to take all that, all that captive. And you and I have divine power. Remember this. You and I have divine power. We have the power of the Holy Spirit resident in our life. There's no thought that should or could take you captive. I don't care how small it is, how large it is, and if it starts to distract you, then take control of it. Do not allow it to take control of you because you have the power of the Holy Spirit. This is not in your notes, but 1 John 4, 4. Uh, is it in your notes? Well, then write it down, 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Plain and simple, isn't it? I have the greater one, and you and I have the greater one resident in our life. We have, the, we have the power, listen, we have the power of faith, hope, and love, don't we? Amen. That's powerful. Yeah. We have that power resident in our life. We have the power of the Word of God Almighty. And we have the power of prayer. And I will tell you something. I think about this, and I pray for people that, um, well, some, I don't even know them. I, I don't even know half the missionaries we pray for. I don't know them, but I pray for them. You know, I think, Lord, uh, I get the prayer list, right? We all get the prayer list. I'll be honest with you, half the names, I don't even know them because they're a cousin of a cousin of an aunt and uncle in Venezuela. I mean, I don't know where they're from, but somebody wants prayer for them, right? All I know is I need to pray for them. I, I, and I think, wow. Father, I, I just don't want to be redundant, but I'm going to pray for him anyway. I just ask you, bless him, watch over him. May your kingdom come. May your will be done in their life. I don't even know what their problems are. But that's none of my business. That's your business. Somebody just asked that I pray for him. Right? And there's unbelievable power when we pray for people we don't even know. But the enemy will mess with your mind and say, why are you wasting your time? You don't know those guys. You have to take authority over that and say, it doesn't matter. I'm called to pray. I have, I don't know about you, my prayers have power. Amen. Do you agree? Yeah. Your prayers have power. I'm, I'm living proof. I mean, you guys pray for me, and my body's getting healed up more and more and more and more every day. I'm feeling better every day. Things are happening every day. And I know you're interceding for me. I can tell it. And I hope you can tell when I'm praying for you. Why? There's power in our prayer. We have the power of the Holy Spirit indwelled within us. And so when the enemy kind of comes and tells you you have no power, no strength, no nothing, you're a, a lousy slob, whatever, take authority over that in Jesus' name. No, no, I'm, I'm a daughter of the living God. Amen. I'm a son of the living God. I'm not going to fall for any of these stupid traps the enemy tries to pull on me. Uh, he died for me. He's renewed my mind. I now have the mind of Christ. Tell you something, that's power. That's a lot of power. Power of the Holy Spirit. And there's a lot of strongholds that, uh, that the enemy, I, we talked about these, and all of us are different. And the enemy tries to make strongholds in your life that he may not try to make in my life. But uh, some of us fall for the what ifs. What if, what if, what if. No, it's here and now, here and now, here and now. Okay? We have to remember that as well. And we are given power to take every single thought captive. And I want to encourage you to do this. 
Do it instantaneously. I rebuke that thought in Jesus' name. I will not think about it. I'll tell you a real silly one. Last night I went to bed. I'm laying in bed. And for some crazy reason, uh, Saturday nights, I want to have a good night's rest. So I'm laying in bed, and I, I kind of, I'm sort of dreaming, and I, I'm dreaming that I have a whole pile of goofy letters beside the bed, and I can't roll over, and I can't move because the bed is, it's just inundated with letters. This is last night, just letters, and they're all kinds of different things, and I, my mind just going in a whirl. So I get up, and I think to myself, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. It's robbing me of my sleep. Now, I wasn't thinking about sex, drugs, rock and roll, candy, ice cream. I wasn't thinking of any of that. There was just a whole pile of letters beside me. Okay? Not going to kill me. But last night, I rebuked it in Jesus' name. I got right back to bed, fell asleep. Now you think... Letters don't have much to do with anything. What I'm trying to tell you is, is sometimes it's not this gigantic, humongous thing. But what it is doing to me, it was robbing me of my peace. It was robbing me of my sleep. So I rebuked it in Jesus' name, climbed back in bed, and had a great night's sleep. Isn't that good? What I'm trying to tell you, it's the simple things that can rob your peace, and you don't even know what, it has nothing to do with bad stuff. It's just a thing to rob your peace, to distract you. And so we have to keep all that in mind. Acts 1.8, and I don't think this is in your notes, but write it down, Acts 1.8, and you will receive power, power, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You're going to have power. Power to overcome the enemy at every single turn in life. You'll have that power. So you can overcome anything and take captive every thought. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who is my strength. Amen? Amen? All things. All things. Unlimited. Don't allow your mind to cut that short. With, well, that doesn't mean all things. Yes, it does. Letters in bed. It means all things, as dumb as it might be. Are you with me? Amen. 1 Peter 1, 13. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Very important. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. You and I are called to holiness each and every day of our life. God calls us to holiness, to purity, if you will. And in Psalms 23, 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Okay? Okay. I told you this last week, and I'll, I'll repeat it till I die. I will not call myself a sinner. Amen. I will call myself a saint. Amen. The price has been paid. I'm no longer going to live in the old life. I've been transformed into a newness of life. Amen? Amen. That's how we have to think. Amen. That's how we have to think. Because the enemy will come in and tell you you're worthless, you're this, you're that, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. Uh uh. I'm a saint. I'm an overcomer. Amen. I can overcome all things through Christ, who is what? My strength, my power, my source. And where's it begin? Not in my vocabulary, right here. Right? right? It's all up here. That's why there's a constant, never ending battle for our minds to try to discourage us, have us feel depressed, whatever. Number three, take the next step. James chapter 4 and verse 7, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Just resist him, resist him. So I have seven things I want to quickly go over in your notes. Number one, submit to God, which means to yield, to bow down, to obey. If I yield to God, 
I want to obey him. I want to obey the word. When God speaks to me, I want to obey it. I want to read the word because that's how often God speaks to each and every one of us. And so I want to walk according to his purposes, his plans. I want to walk in the light, not in darkness. So that's the first thing I want to do. I want to obey. Number two, resist means to stand firm against. When I resist something, I stand firm against it. Um, it's like the old resistance in the Second World War. You had a group that just resisted the enemy, didn't they? They were hiding in caves and all this kind of stuff and doing all this kind of warfare, but they were re resisting, resisting being taken over by the enemy, right? And that's in a real honest-to-goodness practical way. And so 1 Peter 5, 9 says, Resist him, stand firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. I thought about that. And how is that, how's that relevant today? Resist him, stand firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. I thought about Pastor James and Moali, what he's going through, all the dangers. I thought about Kazakhstan, the orphans, the widows, what they're going through, and, and the leaders. What, what are those people going through? I thought about Gopal, Ganeda. I, I just thought about these different things. I thought about Lyle and Ingrid in Uganda. All of a sudden, there's wars going on there, and there's Lyle and Ingrid. I don't know all their needs, but I know I'm supposed to pray for them. They're suffering just like we suffer. It's happened to all of us. It's, we're, we're not the only ones around. It's, it's worldwide, all of our missionaries. But here's the good news, number three. We receive the Holy Spirit, and when you do, you receive power. If I receive the Holy Spirit, I want to know I have power. Amen. Amen. Power to overcome and never, ever, ever to be overcome. Amen. So we have to use that power daily, don't we? Yes. And that's part of the renewing of our minds constantly and the battle that goes on for our brain. Number four, be in the Word. Be in the Word. When Jesus was tempted by the enemy, what do you say? It is written. It is written. Matthew chapter 4, it is written, it is written. Enemy comes here and Jesus said, it is written. So this is what I'm going to do, what the Word of God tells me to do. I don't care what's uh, politically correct. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what anybody else says. All I care about is what the Word of God says. Father, give me the strength to follow through with your Word. Amen. Because it's being attacked. Yes. And Christianity is being attacked. Amen. So we have to stay strong, we have to stay firm, and the Word tells us to do something we do it. Okay? It's very, very, very important. The Word, it is written. Be in prayer. I don't have to expound on that. You know that. Be in prayer. And that's a daily thing. Be in fellowship. It's really important to be in fellowship um, with one another. That's, uh, some people don't attend church, but they attend prayer groups. They attend fellowship groups. But you got to be in fellowship. We're not in this thing alone. We're in this thing together. So we need to be in, in fellowship and be with one another, encourage one another, bless one another. Again, pray for one another. Number seven, very important, put on your spiritual armor every day. Every single solitary day. I've told you this for 50 years. Well, you haven't been here for 50, but I've been doing this for 50 or whatever number. I've forgotten by now. But I still put on my spiritual armor every single solitary day. I do not leave my home unless I'm spiritually dressed. Are you with me? Just don't do it. And I'll tell you, a big, 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 big one uh, for me is the helmet of salvation. 1 Corinthians 2.16, I want the mind of Christ on that helmet. Put that helmet on. I want the mind of Jesus Christ throughout this entire day. Whomever I might encounter, whatever I might have to do, wherever I have to go. And I want to put on that breastplate of righteousness because I, I want my heart protected. Because out of the overflow of the heart, what happens? My mouth speaks. Right? I want my heart protected. I want that overflow to be filled with love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, and mercy with whomever I come in contact with. Well, I could go on and on, but just remember that, okay? Put on your spiritual armor, Ephesians 6.10. Read that and put that on. And then um, number eight, speak out in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Speak out in the powerful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Philippians 2.9. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name that is above every name, 
that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen? Amen. All of that. And then lastly, lastly, our goal is Christ-likeness. Our goal. I want to be just like Jesus Christ. I want kingdom wisdom. I want kingdom peace. I want kingdom power. I want the mind of Christ, the thoughts of Christ, the actions of Christ, the attitudes of Christ, not Bill Hills. That's not a good attitude. I want God's attitude. Amen? I want, I want Christ-likeness. And Romans 8.29 says this, <clears throat> For those whom he foreknew, of whom he was aware and loved beforehand, he also just destined from the beginning for, knowledge, for, no, for ordaining them to be molded into the image of his Son and share inwardly his likeness, that he may become the firstborn among many brethren. So our first response in uh, the battle for our minds is Christ-likeness. To think like Christ, be like Christ, all of our actions, all of our attitudes, all of our desires, everything Christ-like. Now I've got four or five scriptures in your notes there. See that? Um, I could read them all, but I, I, I will read Colossians 1, 127. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of his, this mystery, which is what? Where is he? Where is Christ? Right in here. I have the Christ within. That means I'm, I'm different. I'm a different person. The hope of glory. He dwells within me. And then uh, you can read 1 John 5.18 for yourself. I did it with the Amplified, so I'll let you read it on your own. But I do want to read this. 1 uh, Corinthians 2.16. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? What's it say? Say it again. One more time. The way to think properly. The way to act properly. The Christ likeness comes that we have the mind of Christ. Our conduct, our character, everything. And I close with this, Hebrews 12, 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand on the throne of God. Scorning, shame, everything for you and me. For you and me. Amen? Amen. All that for us. So we can have his mind, his actions, his thoughts, and be obedient to it. And be obedient. Another thing, no excuses. Why you can't. Why you are. No excuses. We're wonderful at making those. Rebuke yourself. I have the mind of Christ. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you've given us, this time of fellowship, this time of worship. I thank you for your word, Father. I thank you that the battle has been won. May we walk in victory. May we walk in victory in Jesus Christ. And I give you thanks and I give you praise, Father, for this day, for this word, for this time, for everybody here. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey.